The Sahara is often depicted as a classic desert landscape, fiercely scorched by the sun, dotted with hidden oases and sand dunes accumulated over the years. It covers nearly one-third of the African continent and is nearly the size of the United States. It has one of the world's harshest ecosystems, covering 3.6 million square miles and having one of the driest climates. Underneath the mass of yellowish-red color that characterizes the Sahara's vast sandy expanses, however, lies the mystery of discoveries unearthed by modern-day scientists and researchers using sophisticated devices and equipment. Around 11,000 years ago, the world's largest hot desert was completely different, beautifully patterned with lakes, rivers, grasslands, and even forests that once dotted the now dry and desolate northern swath of Africa. After the last ice age ended, Somewhere between 11,000 and 5,000 years ago, increased rainfall transformed arid crevices into lakes, whilst green foliage flourished atop the sand dunes. Greenery sprouted as the water level rose, and animals like hippos, antelopes, elephants, and aurochs, an extinct wild ox of Europe from which cattle are probably descended, were drawn into feast on the abundant grasses and shrubs. According to Kathleen Johnson, an associate professor of Earth Systems at the University of California, Irvine, the lush green Sahara paradise, also identified as the African human period, was induced by the Earth's constantly changing orbital rotation around its axis, a sequence that repeats itself every 23,000 years. A report from Space.com, a live science sister site, inferred that the shift went from about 24.1 degrees to the present day 23.5 degrees, a substantial variation that places the Northern Hemisphere closest to the sun during the winter months. Contrary to intuition, the northern hemisphere is tilted away from the sun through the winter season due to the current tilt. Nonetheless, the northern hemisphere was closest to the sun in the summer during the Green Sahara. Today, all the lush green foliage has metamorphosed into a dry and arid basin exposed to the fiery gaze of the African sun. This transition from humid to dry occurred far much faster in certain regions than others could be attributed to the orbital precession alone, eventually resulting in the Sahara Desert as we know it today. Archaeologist David Wright attempts to describe events following this transition in his study and points out an apparent trend he notices, whilst combing through the archaeological and environmental data obtained primarily from sediment cores and pollen records from the same time period. He observed that every archaeological record of the pastoralists which included humans and domesticated animals, revealed that the types and variety of plants changed. Every time humans and their goats and cattle hopped across the grasslands, nothing but scrub and desert remained, convincing Wright to conclude that overgrazing the grasses reduced atmospheric moisture. Essentially, moisture transpired from plants contributes to cloud formation and an increase in albedo, which is basically a measure of how well a surface reflects solar energy. According to him, it is possible this may have facilitated the end of the humid period more abruptly than the orbital changes could explain. Furthermore, it is thought that these hunter-gatherers may have used fire as a land management tool, hastening the spread of the desert. The Eye of the Sahara, also known as the Richet Structure or the Gelba Richet, is the next groundbreaking discovery in the Sahara Desert and even links to the legendary lost city of Atlantis. The Richard structure is a massive bull's eye-shaped geological formation in the Sahara Desert, stretching across a 40-kilometer stretch of Mauritania's desert. For centuries, only a few nomadic tribes in the area were aware of the formation but were photographed for the first time by the Gemini astronauts in the 1960s, who used it as a landmark to track the progress of their landing sequences. Later, the Landsat satellite captured additional images and provided data on the size, height, and extent of the formation. Until long-term studies of the rocks inside the structure, geologists initially thought the eye of the Sahara was an impact crater formed when a space object collided with the surface. Results of the studies have shown, however, that its origins are entirely Earth-based, prompting geologists to seek alternative explanations. Geologists believe the eye of the Sahara is a geologic dome, whose formation contains rocks that are at least 100 million years old, with some dating back to before life on Earth existed.
There are other explanations that point to a connection with the remains of the encased city mentioned by Plato in the 4th century BC. If it can be found in the African country of Mauritania, it means it has been hiding in plain sight the entire time. The search for Atlantis has been ongoing since Greek philosopher Plato first described a mysterious island that seemingly vanished in 350 BC. According to Plato, Atlantis was destroyed and sunk beneath the waves in a single day and night of misfortune. The scientific record does show that the Earth experienced significant climate change around 11,500 years ago when Atlantis is said to have vanished. The Sahara Desert continues to provide mysteries and presents another one about an object discovered there whose functions are unknown to this day. Known as the Clayton Ring, and even more perplexingly, these rings were discovered in Egypt's most inhospitable part of the Sahara Desert. Clayton rings are conical pottery cylinders open at both ends and named after the geographer and desert explorer Patrick Andrew Clayton. They are always discovered with one or more perforated pottery disks that are slightly larger than the ring's smaller opening but do not fit as lids. Potters created some as a set, while others were reworked from old pottery jars and sherds. These objects were not used by the Egyptians who lived along the Nile, instead, they were an essential part of the nomadic herders toolkit in Egypt's first dynasties, known as the Sheikh Mufti culture, in the Dhaka oasis. Clayton rings and discs have been discovered in the oasis around seasonal hunting and herding camps of this culture but also in storages up to 300 kilometers away from permanent water sources and beyond the safe roaming range of any herdsman or hunter. The Clayton rings are shrouded in mystery, prompting the question. What made these objects so valuable that people went to such lengths to transport Clayton rings across the desert? While an image of whales strutting around on heaps of sand dunes in the Sahara Desert seems far-fetched and extremely unlikely, mainly because, well, modern-day whales wouldn't survive once out of water. Yet, there is glaring evidence that their ancestors once swam around in the scorching African desert. In 1902, a group of geologists led their camels through a valley in Egypt's western desert where strong winds had sculpted sandstone rocks into strange shapes over centuries, and the moonlight shone brightly at night, making the sand glow like gold. Whale bones were discovered in the arid valley of a nearby hill known as the Mountain of Hell for its infernal summer heat. The skeletons measured up to 50 feet in length and had extremely thick vertebrae. These remains must have dated back 37 million years to a time when this region, as well as the rest of northern Egypt, was covered by a shallow, tropical sea. Oddly, the clues discovered from the remains of the whales indicated the presence of feet, aligning with theories of scientists who have long conceived that whales were terrestrial mammals that had gradually lost their four legs as they resettled into the ocean over millions of years. As proof of this inference, modern whales have been found to possess vestigial hind leg bones. Nevertheless, there was very little evidence of the transition in the fossil record until paleontologists began excavating hundreds of whale fossils buried at Wadi Hitton Whale Valley and discovered legs and knees. Although older-footed whale specimens have been identified, the numbers in state of preservation at Wadi Hitton are unparalleled. The valley, now on Esco World Heritage Site, is about a three-hour drive from Cairo and receives over 14,000 visitors per year. Paleontologists believe whales are descended from deer or pig-like scavengers who lived near the sea and began spending more time in the water around 55 million years ago. It is believed that they might have first started eating dead fish along the shore and then chased prey in the shallows till they evolved enough to wade deeper. Some of them developed traits that aided in water hunting as they progressed growing in size as they no longer had to shoulder their entire body weight at sea. Their backbones elongated and their ribcages broadened. The majority of the fossils in the valley categorize into two components, the giant with an almost eel-like body, known as Basilosaurus, and the more petite but heavily muscled dord in which strongly resembles a modern whale until its mouth opens to reveal a jaw lined with serrated daggers rather than peg-like teeth. Interestingly, more than 75 whale fossils have been discovered in Chile's Atacama Desert, forcing a debate among scientists as to how they arrived there. 
If you enjoyed this video, watch also the next video on your screen which looks into new discoveries by scientists on greening the Sahara Desert using solar panels and wind farms. As always make sure to give our video a like and subscribe to our channel for more exciting future videos.